I've always loved that hymn by Frederick Martin Lehman. Could we with ink the oceans fill, and were the skies of parchment made? Were every stalk on earth a quill, and every man by scribe the trade? To write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. O oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong, it shall forever endure the saints' and angels' song. Don't you just miss some of those great old hymns? This one's about a subject that uh, sometimes we don't hear so much anymore, about the love of God for us and accepting him as our Savior. By his grace, he loved us that much. That wonderful love and saving grace of the Lord Jesus is all that matters in this life. Let's talk about God's love on today's Senior Insights. The Bible says in 1 John 3, 1 to 3, See how very much our Father loves us, for he called us his children. And that's what we are. But the people who belong to this world, they don't recognize that we're God's children because they don't know God. Dear friends, we are already his children, but he has not yet showed us what we will be like when Jesus Christ appears. But we do know that we'll be like him, for we will see him as he really is. And all who have this eager expectation work to keep themselves pure just as he's pure. Oh, what a verse. Yes, as believers in the saving grace of Jesus Christ, our sins are no longer there. The Father sees us sinless because we're covered by the sacrifice of his Son. And that's why we live in a way honoring him. Sure, we make mistakes, we still sin, but God, it says in the word, showed his great love for us that by sending Christ to die for us, that while we're still sinners, and since we have been made right in the sight of God by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's future condemnation. That's what Romans 5, 8 tells us. We recognize that we're free from the penalty of sin and in gratitude, we work to stay that way by staying away from sin. But if we were to pick one Bible verse that talks more about the love of God that he has for us, most of us would probably settle on John 3:16. For this is how much God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Now let me stop there just for a minute. Did you see how it says the only thing we need to do to be eternally saved is to simply believe in the saving grace of Jesus? Dear ones, do you believe that Jesus is fully God? That he died for our sin penalty? And that is what saves us? That alone. It's just that simple. Just believing that God made Jesus a substitute for us and our penalty. He's a, it's a loving God and we're saved by his grace alone. I hope you know him. I sure don't want to be in heaven without you verse 16 but verse 17 and 18 go on and add to that they say in verse 17 god sent his son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him there is no judgment against anyone who believes in him but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in god's one and only son and that's a good verse too that goes, those two verses go right along with John 3, 16. God recently blessed my wife, Susan, and I with two wonderful sons, godly men. 
But unlike Abraham, I'm not sure I'd been able to uh, sacrifice either of my sons on some mountaintop. Abraham had great faith that God would keep Isaac alive, or at least him bring him back to life if, if it went through all the way. If the Son of God personally appeared before me and told me to do the same thing, I probably would have responded like he did. But I've, however, I'm not sure that I'd be in a, a position to do that. I can't imagine that. But in a situation where I have to save one of my sons or some other person from a situation, a, a life-threatening problem, I'm not sure that I could leave my son behind to die. But God, it says, don't you love that, ver that those two words together in Scripture? We say something, but God. He says, God loved this sick world so much that he gave his only son to die so I could live. He sacrificed Jesus for me and you. The wonderful creator of all of heaven and earth died a very terrible death so that we, his followers, would never die. The father loved women and men so very much that he's willing to give his only son for very sinful people like us. No one deserved this love that he freely gives but he gave his son for us. That love is unmeasurable. Have you ever wondered how much it took uh, for the heavenly father to, to let his only son go through all that he went through, suffering and die just for me and for you? And not just for us, but for everyone on earth who would just simply turn from sin and let Jesus cover us with his precious blood. He did it for everyone, everywhere. It's not just a, a certain way of living that makes us belong to him. We can't earn it at all. All God says is that whoever wants to live with him forever just simply needs to believe to be saved from the torment of hell and to live forever with him in his presence. What greater love could there be? And as we who belong to him wonder about that great love he offers, I think we should also consider what he asks us to do as we live in his love. Oh, he could have just taken us from this earth into his eternal heaven as soon as we believed, but he's left us here uh, for this purpose, a mission for him. In Matthew 28, Jesus tells his disciples, I've given all authority in heaven and on earth, therefore, Go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. He even repeats that in, in Acts uh, 1, verse 8. He says, you will be uh, receiving power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth, even in uh, the state you're living in right now. All we have to do for him is just simply tell others all throughout the world, wherever we are, about his love and how it will uh, just simply be able to save those who believe and they can become part of the family of God forever. I shared my experience in Senior Insights uh, on November 17th, a couple weeks ago, about using the name of Jesus in conversation. Sharing his love with others is so very easy to do. We just get nervous maybe or afraid. The Holy Spirit can use any of us and all of us, even if it's just to plant a seed of salvation in the life of somebody else. Even if we never see the results of what we did or what we said, he can make it work. Let's just be faithful in sharing the gospel of Jesus. We know that in Matthew 20, uh, no, it's 28, verse 20, Jesus uh, ends that with a call for us to be his witnesses. And when he does, he says, be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Oh, what a great and loving God we serve. 
If you have any questions about your relationship with Jesus, talk to a Bible teaching pastor or a Christian friend, or just email us here at Senior Insights. Oh, dear ones, I hope you know him, and I hope you enjoy the knowledge of knowing we'll be with him forever. What greater love could we possibly have been blessed with? Let's close with our blessing. Now may the Lord of peace who brought from the dead the Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip me with every good thing that you may do his will, working in us what is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you, dear ones. What a wonderful blessing it is to be his child.